Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony is about to begin, about five minutes away. Please, at this time, silence your cell phones. Please keep all walkways clear for the procession of faculty, university officials, and graduates. Again, if you would silence your cell phones, keep the walkways clear. The ceremony will begin in about five minutes. There are restrooms located in the lower level of Lupton on the second floor of Hearst and also in Goslin. There is also a first aid station near Lupton Hall should you need it. Thank you and we will begin shortly.
Well, good morning, everyone. Please be seated. What a terrific crowd on a beautiful day. Supposed to get, uh, I checked the weather report, it's supposed to be in the 60s in about an hour, so we're good. We welcome you to the 2018 commencement. I want to add my own reminder to please take a moment and silence your cell phones. And members of the commencement chorale will now sing for us a call to celebration entitled, A World Without Boundaries.
Well, good morning again, everyone. And what a glorious day we have to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates of the class of 2018. As we all know, our graduates did not get here on their own, and behind each and every one of them stands their family, their friends, and their mentors, and, and so many of you are here today. So I'm going to ask the graduates to please rise and, and turn toward your guests and give them a rousing ovation for the support and guidance they have given you. Thank you. I want to add a few other thank yous before we get going. We have one retiring faculty member this year, Professor of Sociology, Dr. Brad Stone, who will be leaving us after more than 30 years of service, and he has been granted faculty emeritus status, and Trustee Rod Odom, who will be moving to emeritus trustee status after more than two decades of service. So please join me in thanking both of these men for their commitment to Oglethorpe. And also a, a very warm thank you to our Chancellor, Dr. Manning Patillo. It's always wonderful to have you with us. And it's uh, my delight to welcome Chris Jackson to Oglethorpe. Thank you, Chris, for, for joining us. And we look forward to hearing your remarks in just a bit. So it has been a historic year for our country. And I think while all of us at Oglethorpe sit in seats of, of privilege, at least somewhat divorced from the turmoil and, and divide around us, our graduating seniors will be formally entering that world starting this afternoon. And I believe your, your time at Oglethorpe ought to provide a, a powerful lesson for you as you leave us to take on this world. And that lesson is this that difference makes a community stronger. One of the things that I appreciate most about Oglethorpe is that our student body looks like America. You come from small towns and big cities. You practice different faiths. You represent different political perspectives. You were born into families of great wealth and into no wealth. The color of your skin spans the spectrum. Some of you were born within our borders. Others were brought here by their parents. Some of you are citizens. Others have been denied that opportunity. And yet here at Oglethorpe, you live together, side by side, not in segregated neighborhoods. You learn together, not in separate schools across town. You play together on the field, in the court, in our Greek organizations. You govern together in our Student Government Association and so many other student groups. We are one community, certainly with our differences, but we know that together we are stronger than apart. And if America is to remain strong, then it would be wise for it to follow Oglethorpe's lead and celebrate the rich diversity that is our community and is our country. <clears throat> we got a letter yesterday from one of our graduating seniors who is not able to be with us today. And his story is an Oglethorpe story. So I'm going to just take a minute and, and read a piece of his letter. Dear Oglethorpe family, hello. I hope everyone is doing well. It has been a long three weeks since the start of basic training, and I've got a lot to share with you. The first three weeks is known as red phase, and I've learned the fundamentals of becoming a soldier, everything from military discipline to combat first aid. The typical day starts at 0400. That's early. With physical training, and ends around 2100 with three square meals in between, seven days a week. 
the drill sergeants like to throw in smoke sessions where we do corrective exercises if we do something wrong. Overall, I'm doing okay. I'm learning and experiencing a lot of really interesting things. One experience I want to share with you is the chemical activity training. I've learned how to protect myself from a chemical attack by walking into a room filled with chemical gas. It's the worst experience of my life ever. Your whole body stings and you're unable to breathe without the protective masks. It is sad to know that these kinds of things and these kinds of weapons are being used against innocent people. To end on a brighter note, I was chosen as our squad leader. No surprise for an Oglethorpe graduate. Basically, I'm accountable for my squad and they make me eat last. <laughs> Next week, I start, start rifle marksmanship where I will learn how to shoot my own rifle. If you'd like to write to me, I've included my address on the back. Please let me know what's going on on campus and the world. One of the things I miss most is information. I bet there's a lot of buzz on campus with graduation being just around the quarter. Yours, Kevin Kim. <clears throat> Kevin was, was not born in this country. He was brought by here by his parents at a very early age. And he is fighting to become a U.S. citizen. My grandparents came to this country at a very early age as well. And they passed a statue as they entered the New York Harbor with this poem. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, she cries with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. And so today I lift Oglethorpe's lamp to the world to witness. We will now proceed with our ceremony of commencement. Let me call upon our chair of the Board of Trustees, Tim Tisopoulos. Thanks, Larry. Good morning. Good morning. What an exciting day. Class of 2018. Congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of the members of the Board of Trustees of Oglethorpe University, we not only offer congratulations to you, but for the work you've done, for all you've learned, and for the fun you've had along the way, we are proud of you. So again, congratulations. And I also want to say welcome, class of 2018, and I say welcome to the Oglethorpe University Alumni Association, because as of today, you have officially joined that group. Now, the Alumni Association is an important organization because it leads the way for all of us that have graduated from Oglethorpe to stay connected to this community. So welcome to the association. So class of 2018, as I say congratulations, I do not do it casually. This is a significant achievement. You're graduating from a highly respected liberal arts college after at least four years and perhaps more of diligence, of persistence. Don't take today lightly. For many of you, you are the first in your family to earn a college degree. Congratulations to those of you that are doing that. Many of you, as you attended Oglethorpe, worked part-time and full-time at jobs to help with expenses. I can identify with you. I remember well rushing from class to the car, changing into my uniform as I got in the car and putting on that name tag so I can get to my shift 
that evening and not be late. That's not easy. And many of you are here with scholarship support and financial aid support. The support is significant, but that support comes with its own pressures and expectations. And don't miss this. What you are accomplishing today means that you stand out in our culture. In fact, just over three out of 10 people in the United States have actually received a four-year degree. So I do say congratulations, and I say that because it is significant. So as I stand before you, it's been about 40 years since I walked on the campus here at Oglethorpe. I can't leave you without at least a little bit of advice. So briefly, here goes. Tip number one, as you finish your experience at Oglethorpe today, but extend your time in the Oglethorpe community and in the broader society, tip number one, keep learning. You may have finished your formal classes. You may never step in a classroom again. Or you might be pursuing a graduate degree or a PhD, but in either case, never stop learning. You'll be healthier, you'll be happier, you'll be more productive, and by the way, you'll be a better colleague, spouse, and friend if you do. So keep learning. Tip number two is work hard. You've already learned to be diligent in the classroom, but as you enter into the workforce in whatever field, whether it's education or ministry, healthcare, or maybe the restaurant business, whatever you do, work hard. It makes a difference when you do. And then lastly, give back. You've learned at Oglethorpe to be part of a rich, broad, diverse community. You've been blessed with so many gifts and talents and opportunities. Don't keep them to yourself. Give back. So as you leave today, don't forget those three. Keep learning, work hard, and give back. And why do I say it's so important for you as an Oglethorpe graduate to do that? Class of 2018, here's why. Because if you keep learning, that's how you make a life. If you work hard, that's the best way to make a living. And if you give back, that's how you make a difference. So embody all that is Oglethorpe. Carry that petrol pride with you. Make a life, make a living, make a difference. And on behalf of all of us in the Oglethorpe community, congratulations. Thank you, Tim, for being part of our celebration today and, and for all that you and your fellow trustees do for Oglethorpe. It's my pleasure to begin the presentation of two special awards made at our commencement to graduating seniors. I now call on our provost, Dr. Glenn Sharfman, to come forward to present the Sally Hull Weltner Award for scholarship and the James Edward Oglethorpe Awards. Thank you, President Shaw. I am pleased on behalf of the faculty to extend a warm welcome to our visitors and guests today as we gather to honor just some of the achievements of the class of 2018. The Sally Hull Weltner Award is given annually in loving memory of Sally Hull Weltner, wife of Dr. Philip Weltner, who was president of Oglethorpe from 1944 to 1953, and who one of his achievements is to begin our core program. The award honors the student in the graduating class who has attained the highest level of scholastic achievement at Oglethorpe with the greatest number of Oglethorpe hours. I am pleased to present this year's winner to an accounting major who has a perfect 4.0 uh, GPA. I've gone back and asked each of his faculty members whether they'd like to change that to an A minus, and none of them said yes. So please help me celebrate Stephen Michael Johnson.
James Edward Oglethorpe Awards are presented to two students in the senior class who, in the opinion of the faculty, realize most fully the aims of an Oglethorpe education in terms of scholarship, leadership, and character. I am pleased to present this year's James Edward Oglethorpe Award to Meredith Myers and Iris Ponce Pinto. Great rounds of congratulations. And congratulations to each of you. We recognize at commencement the outstanding work of two of our faculty members each year. And these, these awards are selected by a committee of students, previous faculty award winners, and alumni members. Dr. Peter Cower, last year's recipient of the Lou Thomason Garrett Award for Meritorious Teaching, will present this year's winner. Good morning. The Lou Thomas Garrett Award for Meritorious Teaching was established in 1994 through a generous endowment gift to the university by the late Lou Garrett and her husband, David Garrett. Mrs. Garrett was an Oglethorpe alumna class of 1952, a member of the Emeriti of the Board of Trustees, and an Oglethorpe Honorary Degree recipient. Rather than listen to me, I've taken a sample of comments from this year's recipient students, and I'll begin here. Brilliant teacher, wonderful mentor, inspired me in class. She's incredible. The best teacher I ever had, her enthusiasm and passion for the subject made me enthusi enthusiastic about learning. Um, I feel the knowledge I gained will stay with me for the rest of my life. I'm not sure what this means. She should possibly think about sitting every once in a while. <laughs> An outstanding professor, her teaching ability alone turned my least favorite class into my favorite class. My writing ability and critical thinking skills improved due to her feedback. In addition, she connected with all of her students and made the class an enjoyable environment for new concepts, as well as challenging previously conceived notions about the world. A phenomenal professor who makes the class engaging, stimulating, and a genuine joy to take. She's always ready to discuss materials and help students given any chance. She rocks, greatest professor ever. Honestly, one of the best teachers I've ever had. She's kind, she's accepting, she's extremely intelligent, and she's a role model for those of us who want to make a difference and help people. She's amazing. I always want to come to class, and I look forward to what we're learning every time. The readings are interesting, and her papers force you to think for yourself while building off of what we've learned in class. She's energetic and truly cares about her students, and is overall just fantastic. Amazing personality. Really talks to and captivates students and motivates them to want to learn about the subject she's teaching about. Love the intellectual rigor of class. Discussions were heated and intriguing. Her style is lithe and uh, accessible to her students, which is no mean feat considering the intellectual density of some of this writing. Getting detailed notes from on my paper and presentations helped me grow and shape as a writer and critical thinker. She really cares about philosophy and the topics at hand and shows it. I've never seen someone so passionate about examining such old texts, and she really makes the subject come to life. Her students are fortunate to be able to learn from her, gaining a deeper understanding and ability to analyze and dig deeper into the text themselves. I could go on for several pages, but I was told that there was an award for the shortest speech. So I will end with this. Actually, two more. She's freaking awesome. They should project a hologram of her in every philosophy class in the world so every student can get the awesome experience I did. I love her. Dr. Prince is the best. I guess I'm done.
Go sit down. <laughs> it's going to take her a while to recover, I think. Thank you, Peter, and congratulations, Amanda. And now call on the previous recipient of the Vulcan's Material Teaching Excellence and Leadership Award, Mr. Matt Huff, to present this year's award. The Vulcan Materials Teaching Excellence and Leadership Award began in 1992 and comes with a cash prize from Vulcan to the Georgia Foundation for Independent Colleges and Oglethorpe University. It is considered one of the highest honors for a faculty member. This year's winner undoubtedly meets the award's goal of, quote, recognizing an outstanding faculty member who demonstrates strong academic skills in the classroom and provides leadership and support to other areas of campus life. For her teaching, this professor has gained a reputation for being challenging, inspiring, innovative, dedicated, and passionate. In fact, when describing her, students often use the B word, brilliant. <laughs> students have said, quote, a brilliant professor, brilliant and very engaging, and this professor is brilliant. Other comments include a truly inspiring academic, a phenomenal lecturer, and a great discussion promoter. One student said, I have thoroughly enjoyed taking this class and feel that my writing, critical thinking, and analysis skills have improved as a result. This professor is always very prepared and encouraging about getting even the shy students to speak up in class. Another student commented, and I love this image, quote, she is a powerhouse of education. Her wealth and knowledge and her passion for the subject is strong. There is no room for laziness in her class. She consistently holds high standards and has kept me on my toes academically in a way that no other professor has. These are just a few of many glowing comments. During her time at Oglethorpe, this professor has taught over 20 different courses, including courses abroad, in the core, and courses across the disciplines. In the areas of leadership, this professor has played an active role on many standing committees, faculty council, academic program, programming committee, and the core committee. Most importantly, she served as director of the honors program, innovating and updating and greatly expanding participation in the program. She now serves as director for the core, for which she has facilitated core conversations, sought connections and coherence across the years of core, and facilitated fresh reforms. She's engaged in campus life in other ways as well, including being faculty head of the outdoor club. And every so often, we are graced to see her musical talents on display in the annual Night of the Arts, or in the case of this past year, at the Boar's Head concert. In all of her efforts, she has been a passionate, effective advocate for students, faculty, and academic excellence. We are proud to name Dr. Sarah Terry this year's winner of the Vulcan Materials Teaching and Excellence Award. It appears to be the year of the women. It is an Oglethorpe custom to have the president of the Student Government Association recognize our golden petrels. This year, I would like to call on Anna Gandy to do this honor. Anna hails from Huntsville, Alabama, is graduating magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a minor in politics. After graduation, she will be attending law school at the University of Michigan and hopes to be a judge. And we can only hope. In addition to SGA president, she has served as president of our Panhellenic Council. Recently, Anna won the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award, which recognizes a graduating senior who puts service above self. And she has absolutely exemplified humble leadership across many different roles at the university. Anna. I am
am honored today to recognize a group of special guests who are seated to my left. Today, we are pleased to induct this esteemed group of alumni into the Golden Petrel Society, Oglethorpe graduates who have been part of our community for 50 years. Alumni have been called the keepers of campus traditions and the conscience of our institution. They are those whom students looked up, up to in our attempts to make a life, make a living, and make a difference, both in our time on campus and as we look towards our futures. Our history is full of individuals who have embodied this motto, including Charles Longstreet Weltner, class of 48, the only representative from the Deep South to vote for the Civil Rights Act in 1969, poet Sidney Lanier, class of 1860, and Reverend G. Jill Watson, class of 68, a golden petrel this year, um, who, although less inspiring, was very humorous yesterday when he revealed that during his time at Oglethorpe, he was responsible for releasing all of the rats that had been kept in Goslin during the, <laughs> um, <laughs> a fun story that came out yesterday during the groundbreaking for our new um, Ike Cousin Center for Science and Innovation. Um, each class at Oglethorpe has its own story of laughter across the quad, of maybe a little bit of well-intentioned trouble, but certainly moments in the classroom and across campus that have made us into the people that we are today people who have been uniquely changed by our time at Oglethorpe and have made us deeply grateful for this institution. I thought I was gonna not do that, it's fine. <laughs> our Golden Petrels clearly embody our proud Oglethorpe spirit and are exceptional representatives of our great institution, symbolic of both our historic roots and our hopes for the future. As seniors, we look particularly to our Golden Petrels and all they have accomplished in their lives as we set out on similar journeys to theirs that, that began 50 years ago. Your presence here today inspires our class and um, gives us hope that what we have learned at Oglethorpe um, may follow your example and teach us to strive for excellence in our lives and careers, just as you have done and Oglethorpe graduates have done for the past 175 years. I know that I, at least, am looking forward to our own class reunion here in 2068. <laughs> Thank you for your continued involvement in the university. We are incredibly proud of what you have achieved. Will our Golden Petrels please stand, if able, to be recognized? Mr. Ben C. Crawford, class of 1962. Mr. James A. Riley, class of 1966. Mr. Thomas J. Browning, class of 1967. And celebrating their 50th reunion, the following members of the class of 1968. Mr. Frederick R. Ashley, Mr. G. Douglas Alexander. Mrs. Yeti Levinson Arp. Mr. Thomas M. Baird. Mr. Robert F. Burnett, Mr. F. B ben F. Cochran, Mr. Robert P. Hoyt, Mr. Roger A. Littell, Mrs. Barbara Beggs Littell, and Dr. G. Jillman Watson. <laughs> On behalf of the student body and the Oglethorpe Alumni Association, for your steadfast commitment to Oglethorpe University, we honor each of you today with this bronze medallion engraved with the original Oglethorpe crest. This medallion was created especially for our Golden Petrel members. We hope that you will cherish the Golden Petrel medallion and wear it proudly at other university functions and future Golden Petrel ceremonies. Please join me in applauding our Golden Petrels. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you for this significant milestone and, and thank you for the legacy that you have left us here at Oglethorpe. And then I, I look forward to welcoming, welcoming you back in 2068. A traditional feature of our commencement has been a presentation by a leader of the senior class and this year Hannah Gibbs, president of the senior class will be our speaker. 
Hannah came to Oglethorpe from Valrico, Florida. She's graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in International Studies and will be pursuing technical theater after graduation, beginning with an internship this summer at the Center for Puppetry Arts. She's been a resident assistant, a community advisor, active with Sigma Sigma Sigma, serving on their executive council as well as our Panhellenic and Omicron Delta Kappa councils. Hannah. Good morning. I'm gonna try not to cry, just fair warning. Thank you for joining us today in the celebration in the, of the accomplishments of the class of 2018. This past year, I had the honor of serving with some amazing members of this class, so I wanna thank my senators. Thank you, Stephen Johnson, Bo Wood, Ignacio Blanco, Josiah Millen, and Journey Have to Miriam for all, the, all that you did for our class. Also, thank you to Anna Gandy, Larissa Randall, Chantel Jones, and Alan Smith for your service on the Executive Council alongside me. It was an honor to represent the class of 2018 with all of you. Four years ago, I started college with a lot of hope, an abundance of dreams, and a little bit of fear. I had declared a major before I got here, like a lot of us do, but I didn't know where to go on this path. I couldn't see what the next four years would hold for me, and I definitely did not have a specific job or even a field in sight. Even if that wasn't your path, whether you have known the exact career you've wanted since you were 10 years old, or you came to Oglethorpe with even less of a plan than I did, you found your way through. Over the past few years, we've all managed to seemingly find our way to this day, to this stage, and to these diplomas we're all about to receive. Congratulations on making it this far. Finding your way is one of the most important things we've all learned here. When you learn how to find your way, you learn so much more about yourself. Whether you learned how to get through a hard class, a heart-wrenching breakup, or a sadness you couldn't shake, you grew from that. You found the support you needed, you learned how to reach out and find help, and sometimes the help was forced upon you. Those people that helped you through it all are the people that will stick with you for a long time. Make sure you say thank you to them today, whether they were your best friend, your professor, or your grandpa. Those people and the memories you have with them is what we really will take away from Oglethorpe. Yes, we will walk away from here today with a diploma in hand, but that diploma isn't all of it. As you walk across this stage today, think about all you get to take away from this magical place. Think back to the times you had your freshman year, running around the halls in Treyer, Job, or Dempsey, trying to capture that sense of freedom that was once just bestowed on all of us. Think of all the really dumb mistakes you made there. <laughs> the nights you'll never forget, and the ones you'll never remember, and the amazing laughs you shared along the way with your new friends. Think about your sophomore year here, about everything you thought you knew, and how you were wrong about all of it. <laughs> sophomore year was about mistakes, and falling on your face over and over and over again. We learned an important lesson that year about the things we brought with us from our past that were holding us back and how to let go of those habits, doubts, and people so that we could become better ourselves. Think about junior year and hitting the ground running. That was the year so many of us found our passions and found out how to make Oglethorpe our own. That year is the year so many of us took what we had learned in the last few semesters and made our marks on this campus and on the people around us that will last a lifetime. Be proud of that year, of surviving some of the hardest classes you ever took, and even harder life lessons, and making it out on the other side. And finally, as you walk across this stage, think about your senior year. Think about the friends that are still sitting next to you, and the ones that had to leave along the way, but still hold a spot in your heart. Think about the moments of trying to relive your stupid freshman year antics as a 22 as a 22 year old and how the end can never feel like the beginning again don't forget all the arbitrary accomplishments you had here from climbing on roofs to singing the same musical over and over again with your friends to the late nights in goslin that led to you passing your final classes here in the time we have spent growing alongside one another i've seen so many of my friends and peers have great successes and much more frequently amazing failures. 
It's hard to accept sometimes, but our failures, if we choose to learn from them, are the things that help us the most in the long run. We don't remember the classes that were easy. We remember the hard ones, the ones that pushed us outside of our comfort zones, the classes that made us into better academics and better people. We don't always remember when we lose the race, but we do remember the next steps we took to make ourselves better after it. Some of the hardest struggles I've seen my friends overcome here have been the ones that help find themselves and find their way in the world. And when we find our way, we accomplish even more than we thought possible. While Oglethorpe didn't have to be the place that taught us all of these things, it was. It was where you chose to be on your own for the first time, and it was where you choose to grow and find yourself. So, look around this place and be happy that you can't find a spot you don't have a memory at. Try not to forget about the great times you had, from staying up way too late in a 24-hour room, or running around this quad at Stomp the Lawn, or watching crazy chariot races in Dine and Dash at Greek Week. But don't worry if you find yourself forgetting in the next few years. All of you hold a piece of the Oglethorpe story. These grounds, despite their ever-changing nature, will always hold on to the moments we hope we never forget. But the ghosts of our past selves will be hanging out with the elephant in the ground into the library and will wait for us to walk back on this campus. One day we'll return and remember how small we used to be and how happy we are that we learned so much here. These past four years changed us, and it would be a shame not to recognize our own growth. A wise man once told me, nothing lasts, everything is moving on. So don't be scared of this end, because ends, endings mean new beginnings. Be happy about the times you had here, because they sculpted you into who you are today. But don't be afraid of moving on, and growing even more as you move across town, across the country, or across the world. Oglethorpe will always be here, and it may find you in the most surprising of places. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Very sweet. I would like to thank the class of 2018 for their contributions to the senior gift. All of those who participated are wearing their black and gold cords today. Your gift will go toward the annual fund to support scholarships for the next generation of students. So thank you. We will now hear from the Oglethorpe University Singers under the direction of Dr. Timothy Powell perform for us a piece entitled The Road Home, arranged by Stephen Paulus and featuring soloist soprano Gillian Rabin.
Thank you, Dr. Powell. We now come to a very special part of the program. I'm going to ask Chris Jackson to join me at the podium. The honor degree tradition at Oglethorpe dates back to 1847. And Chris now joins this legacy of leaders demonstrating excellence in craft and the betterment of humanity. Chris is most recognized for his performance in Hamilton, the American musical. He, he told me that if you all check under your seat, everybody has uh, two tickets to Broadway. Is that what you said? Yeah. But we are honoring him today to celebrate both his professional achievements, but equally his offstage work, increasing the awareness of autism. We are also pleased for Stacia Kingston, a former classmate of Chris's at the American Music and Dramatic Academy, to read the honorary degree citation. Stacia? Christopher Neal Jackson, you enrich the lives of generations through your work on stage, on screen, and in music and storytelling. A successful actor, singer, composer, and advocate for families facing autism, you embody the Oglethorpe Creed to make a life, make a living, and make a difference. As a Grammy and Emmy Award-winning songwriter and composer, and two-time Tony Award nominee, your career has traveled both down Sesame Street and Broadway. You have inspired us as George Washington in the critically acclaimed, award-winning production of Hamilton, an American musical. Your performance of Try a Little Kindness with Elmo and his friends in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade reminded us to lead with love and just shine our light for everyone to see. From singing in church in your hometown of Cairo, Illinois, to studying at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York, you have brought integrity and creativity to every production, performing off-Broadway by the age of 20. Your stage and screen credits are numerous and impressive. Hamilton, holler if you hear me, Bronx Bombers, In the Heights, Memphis, and The Lion King, among many others. In film and television, You've opened doors to new audiences in Freestyle Love Supreme and The Good Wife, as well as Fringe, Gossip Girl, and the current hit CBS drama, Bull. Your body of work encompasses a wide range of characters, musical styles, and storylines. Children around the world embrace and sing your songs. As a composer and songwriter for Sesame Street and music director of The Electric Company on PBS, you received six Emmy nominations with a win for What I Am on Sesame Street with Will I Am. <laughs> Your career came full circle in 2016 when you returned to Disney as the singing voice for Chief Tui in the film Moana. You bring hope and encouragement to children and families living with autism. As you and your wife Veronica have been personally affected by autism, you've lent your voice to support the advocacy organization Culture City to heighten awareness of autism and empathy for those affected by it. In recognition of your achievements in the arts, I present with the endorsement of the Oglethorpe, Oglethorpe University faculty and the Board of Trustees, Christopher Neal Jackson for the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, honoris causa, And by the authority vested in me by the Charter and the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer on you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts on Oris Calza with all the privileges, honors, and responsibilities thereto appertaining.
I asked my wife if she could start referring to me as Dr. Jackson. She didn't even laugh. I didn't get a, even, a, even a grin. My goodness. Good morning. Uh, let me first thank Dr. Shaw, Dr. Sharfman, and the Board of Trustees and the Faculty Council, alumni, and of course, the graduating class of 2018. <laughs> um, I owe a special measure of thanks to my wife and to my two lovely children who are back in New York, but uh, send their warm regards. And uh, if, and the, the, the friends and family members that have come to see you today, if they're anything like mine, when I graduated from college 23 years ago, um, the look of relief and surprise that rested on their face that I had actually survived that much time away and yet I hadn't ended up in jail uh, with any uh, body parts broken was, was quite a surprise to I think my entire town. Cairo, Illinois is where I come from, a town of less than 3,000 people. I left there in 1993 to attend the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York at the age of 17. There are a lot of you here that do, really, do math really well and really quickly in your head, please refrain from doing so right now. Uh, thank you for allowing me to join in the chorus of praise and, the, and pride in your accomplishments today. That I get to honor your hard work and perseverance is a, is a great honor to me. I mean, I'm happy to be with you here today, not only because of this, because I mean, wow. Um, <laughs> But I honestly have no idea why you've asked me to be here. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking that my, my former castmate, Stacia, probably had uh, some, a hand in that. So I'd just like to say off the bat, if the next few minutes don't go well, it's totally her fault. <laughs> if they do go well and you don't feel hotter than you did 30 minutes ago, uh, it's her fault too. <laughs> Thank you, Stacia. <laughs> we are a long way from the lights of, bro of a Broadway stage. A long way from the organized chaos of a set of a TV show being made. That's where I live. We're at the beginning of a new road to the future. That's where you guys live. A place where there is no script. There's no predetermined conclusions. It's just you and your dreams and your hang-ups and your successes and your mistakes. But if, it, if today signifies anything, it's that you have figured quite a few things out. And hopefully you've grown some thick skin. Hopefully your perspective has matured. Hopefully you've chosen your direction. Because I have to tell you, perhaps in no other time as of now, you are needed. And your voices are needed and your ideas and innovations are needed. While considering what I would share with you today, I was at a loss as to what, I might, what you might find inspiring. What could I offer that could serve as motivation in a moment like this? And I asked around, listened to my favorite music, consulted my favorite authors, went to YouTube and watched a ton of famous speeches. I'll check that off the list. I, I mean, this is a tall order for a guy who makes a, le a living reading words that were written for him. I went to our first president, spent a little time with that guy. I found out the, the, the words of George Washington particularly prescient. One of my favorite quotes where he said, I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. In a moment in time where truth is under siege seemingly from all sides, character and honesty matter. The line between reality and fiction play out in every part of our culture and our discourse, in our work, and, our, and in our expectations of ourselves and each other. I, I went to the voice of Donny Hathaway when he's saying, keep your self-respect, keep your pride, get yourself in gear, keep your stride. Never mind your fears, brighter days will soon be here. Take it from me, someday we'll all be free. I went to that guy that wrote that show that I did, Lynn Miranda, I said, dude, what should I talk about when I go to Atlanta in front of all of these graduates who, you know, who've accomplished things? And then uh, with a grin on his face, he said, act like you know how to speak in front of people. <laughs> I 
but I considered his words. Let me tell you what I wish I had known when I was young and full of glory. You have no control who lives, who dies, who tells your story. I'd like to tell you that you can expect your lives to get easier. They probably won't. The decision's clearer. They're not. The disappointment's muted and your victory's sweeter. But I can't promise you any of that. What I can do is share with you my hope in you and in tomorrow. Hope is what endures. Hope is what you've learned and continue to learn. Faith and justice prevailing for everyone and swiftly at that. And above all, love. One of my favorite authors, F. Scott Fitzgerald, said, I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start over again. I pray you a lifetime of new beginnings, surpassed expectations, and in leaving you with the words, yet again from that guy, George Washington, through the, guy, through the pen of Lynn Miranda, I know that you can win. I know that greatness lies in you. But remember, from here on in, history has its eyes on you. Thank you so much for letting me share this day with you. Congratulations and God bless. Thank you so much, Chris, for being with us today. A nice breeze has come up. That means we're now ready to award degrees and diplomas. <laughs> Dr. Sharfman, Chair Tosopoulos, will you uh, join us? I heard that. As I call a graduate's name, I may indicate that he or she is graduating cum laude. That means that a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher out of four has been achieved. Magna cum laude 3.7, summa cum laude 3.9. Select students are graduating with honors. They have successfully completed our honors program, which includes the writing and defending a thesis under the direction of a faculty advisor. I will name each student's honors program faculty advisor who will come to the platform to hood his or her graduate. Director Matt Huff will be assisting in the hooding on behalf of Seema Shrikande, the honors program director, who is in India, but I'm sure watching via live stream. And one final logistical note to parents and friends. We have employed a professional photographer who will photograph each graduate twice as diplomas are awarded and after each graduate exits the stage. There are areas on either side of the platform from which you may take pictures, but I respectfully ask you please remain behind the roping to allow the professional photographers to take those photos so the flow of students is not interrupted as each exits the stage. I also ask that you not gather behind the stage um, and thank you in advance for your cooperation. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies, Bachelor of Business Administration, and Bachelor of Science degree, please rise. And if you're unsure, that's all of you sitting in front of me. <laughs> President Shaw, the faculty enthusiastically recommends these candidates for degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Charter, and the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer on you an Oglethorpe degree with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Please be seated. Will the first row only of degree candidates please rise and come forward? The remaining candidates should remain seated until instructed otherwise by the marshals. And while they're doing so, can we recognize and applaud all these graduates and give them our congratulations. <laughs> and
Ashley Marie Agredo. Elizabeth Ann Kirkwood Allen, summa cum laude. Parker J. Allen, cum laude. Juliana Page Altman. Tori Lynn Antley. Britton Arahu. Kalena Archer, magna cum laude. Abby Annalise Argo, cum laude. Jessica Erin Azrin, cum laude. Monique Delatora Bandong Cum Laude. Karina Barreto Robayo Cum Laude. William W. Beach Jr. in absentia, Samuel Emmanuel Blair Cum Laude. Kevin Blaylock. Ignacio Jose Blanco Baez, cum laude. Erica Shalom Blunt. Michael Schiller Bauer, magna cum laude. Jayla Elise Brown. Sarah Bess Brown in absentia, Jesse Egan Brunstad. Tylan Anthony Isaac Ross Buckner in absentia, Chadwick Ryan Burke. Elizabeth McLeod Burns. Francisco Cadillo Hasbin in absentia. Andrea Tamar Campbell. Shalanda V. Cash. Omar Arroyo Castillo in absentia, Carla V. Castro Matute. Kira Darby Ciparini. Garang N. Chinawala. Lavinia Mariana Chichi in absentia, Keaton Elizabeth Cobble. Wade Merrick Coleman. Celia Cortez, magna cum laude in absentia, Adriana Renee Cowens. Connor P. Crook. Haley Victoria Daigle. Amanda Monique Darius Cum Laude.
Paige Sinclair Davis, magna cum laude. Ada Fernanda Del Cid, magna cum laude in absentia. Patrick Dunn, disloge in absentia. Anne Marie Di Bartolo in absentia. Julius Duncan in absentia. Got them all done with. Bethany N. Duro. James Henry Edwards. Liliana Esquivel. Rachel Y. M. Farrington, magna cum laude. Nelson Antonio Ferrafino Martinez. James Robert Finch II. Brandon Allen Fish. Sarah Elizabeth Fritz. Michaela Fitzpatrick. Kieran Beckett Flake. Rosa Bryn Fowler. Jose J. Franco. Gracie Gallegos. Anna Merrill Gandhi, magna cum laude. Satil Yair Garcia Diaz. Sophia Monet German. Hannah Fawn Gibbs. Cum laude. Robert Golden, magna cum laude. And Robert will be hooded by his advisor, Dr. Karen Schmeichel. Jonathan Christopher Guy. Joel Guzman. Journey Angashe Habtamarium. Sean Allen Handy. <laughs> Dina Ann Herod. <laughs> Sean Hastings. Claire Jewel Hoback. Abigail Naomi Hohenstein, cum laude. Taylor A. Holmes. Jordan Ray Hauser.
Alan Donaldo Huerta Santian in absentia, Sarah Ymir Ibre. Christina Funmalayo Imana. Abby Jackman. Anthony Rashad Jackson. Caroline Kipland Johnson. Stephen Michael Johnson, summa cum laude. Heather Johnston. Chantel Jamia Jones. Curtis Jones, Jr. Selena Kassam, summa cum laude. Will Keegan, magna cum laude. Kirsten McCall Kilpatrick. Young Ho Kevin Kim in absentia, as we've heard. Rachel Grace Klicka, magnum cum laude. Mallory Lauren Knopf. Connor Wayne Knotts. Chandler Lakin. John Thomas Iverson Lane, magna cum laude. Christopher Eugene Lawrence. Chase Taylor Lawson, summa cum laude. Nicholas Leslie, summa cum laude. America G. Laborio. Victoria Grace Lindbergh, cum laude, and Victoria will be hooded by her advisor, Dr. Jay Lutz. Caleb Logan. Miranda Nicole Lynch. Alyssa McKenzie, magna cum laude. Judith Marine Bonilla, magnum cum laude. Denova Amira Martinez Anaya. Garvin Joseph Valenzuela Mata. La Arni Valenzuela Mata Cum Laude. Yeah. 
Kayla Elizabeth Mata. Dolores Marie Mims McCoy in absentia, Jared Ray McSwain summa cum laude. And Jared will be hooded by his honors advisor, Dr. Amanda Prince Woolley. Dr. Prince. <laughs> Tabitha Mele. Beatrice Happy Menjor. Sierra Leanne Miller. J. Millen, magna cum laude. Rachel Millen. Arcelia Denise Moon. Christopher L. Morgan. Judd Motz in absentia, Matthew Dow Motz. Matthew Murray, cum laude. <laughs> Meredith Grace Myers, summa cum laude. And Merida will be hooded by her honors advisor, Dr. Sarah Terry. Jackson Huntley Nash in absentia, Daniel Neal Neely Holt in absentia, Austin Norman in absentia, Joseph David Narachi. Nicole Tatiana Naboa Pimiento, magna cum laude. Michael Nunez. Austin O'Malley in absentia, Cindy Abigail Astorga Rivera. James Creston Owen III. <laughs> Alyssa Michelle Padawano, cum laude. <laughs> Lucero Francisco Lorenco Paishon. Patrick Earl Pettisall. <laughs> Kiera Teosha Petway. <laughs> Vin Pham. <laughs> Gerald DeMichael Phillips. Karina Montfort Pinal, magna cum laude. Marie Pittman. Iris Daniela Ponce Pinto, magna cum laude.
Iris will be hooded by her honors advisor, Dr. Marielle Meyer. Cynthia Yarissa Pruitt. <laughs> Zarifa A. Perna. <laughs> Ariel Christina Radford. <laughs> Bobby J. Radford. Larissa Morgan Randall Magna Cum Laude. Pablo Razo. Robert Rizak. Sarah Grace Rogers, magna cum laude. Sarah will be hooded by her honors advisor, Reshmi Habar. I should note for the record that Sarah's honors thesis had to do with Hamilton. Alfredo Rodriguez. Victor Tonelli Rolfs in Obsessia. Ariel Jasmine Rucker. Orion Alexander Ruffin Green. Freeman Rufus. Rachel Corinne Sampson. Allegra Morgan Schmidt. Sandeep Sigal, magna cum laude. James Stewart Seidel, cum laude. Mika Sharma. Michael William Sheehan. Gregory Sherwin, magna cum laude. Tori Marie Short, cum laude. Michelle Kathleen Vasquez. Holly Ann Sickling. Bruna Camilla Silva. Angel Nicole Sims.
Connor Elliott Smith. Jessica A. Smith, magna cum laude. Jenkinson Payne Smith. Todd Allen Smith, the second. Lauren and Alexander Sokol. <laughs> Stuart Morin Spires, Jr. <laughs> Mora Springstead, magna cum laude. Rebecca Marie Spry, summa cum laude. Audrey Elizabeth Stadler, magna cum laude. Kayla Michelle Stone. Caitlin Tabalog, magna cum laude. Sebastian Tamayo. Labricia Cecilia Taylor. Jonathan Bryce Thomas. Danielle Tanisha Thompson. Philia Trejo Hernandez. Laura Trent, cum laude. <laughs> Vernon Allen Trice III, in absentia, Milvia Nicole Trinidad Maria. <laughs> Mike Turner. Valentina Vega. <laughs> Sabina Vecris, magna cum laude in absentia. Bethany Walker Branch. <laughs> Mora Alexandra Walters, cum laude. Alec S. Wan. Jutoria T. Warner, magna cum laude. Harold Benjamin Welsh. Rebecca A. White. I know. 
Twyla L. Whitley. David A. Williams. Stefan Williams. Alexander Wilson. Katie Renee Wilson, cum laude. Katie will be hooded by her honors advisor, Dr. Justin Wise. Kia Thomas Womack. Bo Jarrett Wood. Caitlin Woodruff. Deborah Debricia Humans. Kamari Jamilia Young. Marlena Sidel Young. Matthew Anderson Young. Victoria Rose Zangari. Gianna Nicole Zitello. Lyric Elise Farmer. Can we give our class of 2018 a big round of applause? Dr. Sharpen did a terrific job reading those names. He, he did forget the one thing that you, he, to tell you not to cheer in between the individual. So we're going to do that at one more time. We're going to do it again. <laughs> Hannah, you want to come up? So in 2011, the graduating class established a tradition with a turn of the tassel. And we're going to continue that tradition this year. So I'm going to request a, a drum roll followed by a, a countdown, a three, two, one, and then we're going to tell you to move your tassels. So in order to do that correctly, you should get your tassel on the right if it's not there already, because you're going to move it to the left. And while you do that, the, uh, the crowd will give you a, uh, another warm congratulations. So um, drum roll, please. Three, two, one.
So the members of the Oglethorpe University faculty and staff provide intellectual guidance and service to our students on a daily basis. And we are so proud of, of what they do and how they serve the university. Our university trustees have also play an important role year to year. So I'm going to ask the faculty, staff, and trustees who are here to please stand and allow yourselves to be recognized. Thank you. So at the conclusion of our ceremony, our faculty and trustees will recess first to form a receiving line on the sidewalk between Lupton and Hearst. And the graduates of the class are asked to proceed to that line and, and uh, visit with your individual faculty members as you wish. And guests uh, may also, of course, uh, do that as well. And please linger and, and enjoy the fellowship. We have refreshments set out for you in the air-conditioned tent behind you. I'm going to also, if you've got a water bottle, we've got recycling containers. I will ask you to please drop the bottle in the recycling container as you, as you move to the quadrangle. In a moment, Dr. Powell and the commencement chorale will lead us in singing the alma mater. The words are in your program. Please sing this with lots of gusto. This, this will be the last time today you have the opportunity to sing it. And I'll remain standing after the alma mater for a benediction, which will also be sung by the chorale. And then please finally remain in your seats until the marshal has escorted the platform party, the faculty, and the graduates um, into the back. So would you all please now stand for the singing of our alma mater.